not a lot of information is out there about Spanish charcuterie and about the how they about the matanza and how they break down pigs and why that's different from how we do in America and why it's important and special and has a place in the world. And right now in America, we understand the technique of charcuterie. We're making wonderful things, but we're looking outwards now. Where there's a charcuterie tradition, and I firmly believe that Spanish charcuterie is next. And I really wanted to take the opportunity to explain that to the U.S. I was cooking for Jose Andres, and I really got into um, cooking the Spanish gastronomy. And you know, Jose is very famous from Asturias. He's from Mieres, and he's well, he's quite the chef and entrepreneur, and, and he's a real inspiration for me. And I was able to win a uh, place on the ESEC scholarship, which is a very special program put on by the Spanish government. And I got to visit Asturias during that time, and I fell in love with it. You know, how can you not? The book is three parts. The first part of it is the story of the matanza and the charcuterie and what this is and where it comes from. The second part is the recipes or how the charcuterie is made and, and why it's made in a certain way in one area and then it's made in a different way in another area. The third part is the companion recipe. So you've made or you have chorizo asturiano that's been smoked, it's a beautiful product. And you have your morcilla sotillana, it's also smoked and it's very loose and almost spreadable. So great, and then you have some panceta kicking around. Well, guess what? Go buy some fabas and you're gonna make a fabada. You know, for the book, it was really important to learn about fabada. Because it's, if you're gonna talk about Asturias, and talk about the embutidos and chaseina. Aceite. Aceite eso. Um, you know, fabada is like, it's, it's the dish that does the most honor to the charcuterie here, I think. And there's no one better who cooks it than, than Nacho. He's, his is famous for very good reason. It's awesome. Eso pimentón. I have a really great photographer, a very talented person named Nathan Rollinson, and he's um, done some work in the United States, and he, we have a very similar vision for this project, which is to do honor to the people producing the embutido, the chaisina, who are doing the matanza, the, the people who, this is their life. And we want to show this in a light such that we're presenting, a, we're presenting who these people are, what they do, and why they do it. These pigs are really interesting. They, in the United States, we have the woolly pig, the mangalitza. That's, I mean, I've never seen a pig that has this much hair, which apparently loses during the summer. And you look at you know the ears, you look at the tail, you look at the hooves. These, these are really unique. And something I found really interesting, uh, you know, these animals that apparently they have a high content of humidity or, or moisture in the meat. And that in and of itself is interesting. But then when when he mentioned that uh, that makes the animal perfect for smoking, well, we're in the land of smoked meats. We're in the land of smoked chorizo and morcilla and now they have a pig that is bred for that. That's that's pretty unique and interesting. Each region has their specialty, and here in Asturias, obviously the smoking is a big part of it. But you know, also, you just you find some really wonderful people up here, and it's something that we really enjoyed. I, I, the hospitality we've been shown here in Asturias, some of the best I've ever had in my life. Really great people. We're making bollo preñao. Uh, yeah, I, I call it the Spanish hot, uh, the Spanish bagel dog because it's um, you know it's a sausage roll. It's the, some a lot of different cultures who have sausage they found a way to stuff it in bread. This is the Asturian version. It's really good. I think going into the future when there's enough demand and the people come over to Spain and they try, they come to Asturias and they try the chorizo here and they say, you know, it's ridiculous, I can't get this back home. I ate it here, I'm still alive. It's delicious, so let's start bringing it in. He's got morcilla up top. Yeah, go ahead. And he's got chorizo. Those are the two styles of the charcuterie he's got going on. It's, it's all, the morcilla is obviously cooked. The chorizo is not, he's cooking it. It's one of the few examples I've found, actually, in Spain of chorizo that you cook, as opposed to just being cured. This is actually raw chorizo. 
that he throws in the grill and rocks it out. The charcuterie, you know, it's, it's a method of preservation so that people could eat protein throughout the year during times of famine because it wasn't always as abundant as it is now. And so they didn't just eat, you know, have sausage hanging. They, you know, they sliced them off and eat it, but they also used it in recipes, chorizo con sidra, which of course sidra, we're in, we're in the cider region. We know our chorizos, we know our morcillas, we know our jamones, but we know there's so much more. The chosco is amazing. There's no reason why the Chosco isn't out there. It's not going to be relegated to Tineo much longer, though. And, and all the other products, the Lacons and, and everything else that we've seen in Spain, it's, I, I hope it's coming soon to a store near me. The book not only speaks to the charcuterie, but also how it's used. <laughs>